Hello, 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 everyone. I hope you are doing well. My name is Sayam, and welcome back to the channel. Right today, we're gonna solve this very beautiful problem: count covered buildings. Trust me, guys, this is not at all a difficult problem. I don't know why the acceptance rate is very low, but I would rate this exactly. This is a medium problem, and this is actually a beautiful problem. We'll see the intuition. We'll see the thought process. And with that note, if you're new to the channel, make sure hit to subscribe to the channel and like the video. We'll see the solution then. Let's try to get started. You are given a positive integer n, okay, representing a n cross n city. Perfect. You are also given a 2D grid of buildings where building of i x comma y denotes a unique building located at a coordinate x comma y. So you have a n cross n grid, right? And you have some buildings here, some at some particular coordinates. All have unique coordinates. That means what? Like at a particular coordinates. A uh, only single building is there, or no building is there. A building is covered if there is at least one building in all four directions. Perfectly fine. Return the number of covered buildings. So, क्या मतलब है? जैसे इस तरीके की building है, right? So, this building is covered. Let me just use the different pen. So, yeah, this building is covered because this is on the up, down is there. One building is there. Cross represent buildings. Okay, this is represents building. I hope you are getting it right. These are the buildings that I am talking about, and they are saying that it should be covered by top, bottom, left, and right with at least one building. Okay, yar. After reading this, what intuition you get? Firstly, Sayam, you always tell go to the time complexity. Firstly, calculate the time complexity we require to solve the problem. So n is ten power five. Okay, okay, and buildings uh, size also is around ten power five. Okay, okay. So you can easily get that n cross n. Oh, sorry, n cross n is equals to ten power ten, which means we cannot at least traverse in whole grid because ten power ten is out of the range. At max, we can go ten power eight or actually ten power seven. But yeah, at max, this is the number of operation we can do in one second. So you have to calculate the time complexity based on that. So definitely, we cannot traverse the whole grid. Fine. So what you will do, Sayam? It is very simple. What you can do? Go to this node. Go to a particular building. Go to a particular building. And will what we will do? In this row, in this row, we'll check whether the any building exists or not. We'll go here downwards whether any building exists or not. We go rightwards. We go leftwards. And this is very simple. Okay, okay, okay. But is that? Can you? Imagine the time complexity. So, firstly, you go iterate to every building, right? That means n multiplied by you have to go in all four directions, right? And you have to search for a building. You have to search for a building. That means you have to again traverse for that all the buildings, right? So you can say n into n into four also because you are four times you are traversing one for left. Okay, in one go you can calculate for left, right also. Let's say we can omit this four, optimize this. So at max n square, but that won't suffice because n square is ten power, ah uh, ten. That won't be fine, right? I hope you are getting it. How n? I hope you get it. Why we are getting n? Because we are going on the up direction. Because we need to check. Okay, is there an up building? Up means same x coordinate. Here the x coordinate is same. Here the y coordinate is same. Cool. So one optimization from here, I think people can think, Sayam, what we can do somehow if we can store all the coordinate, all the buildings with the same x coordinates and same y coordinates, we can club them up. Then we can do some optimal thing. Hmm. That is a good idea. So people can think, Sayam, what we will do? See, we will create two maps. What we will do? We'll create two maps. One with same x coordinates, one with some same y coordinates, and then we can iterate, right? Then in that case, we don't need to go in all the buildings. We need to go only in that buildings which has same x coordinates for top and bottom, and same y coordinates from left or right. But you're absolutely right. But again, there is a problem. What is the problem? See, let's say this is the worst case scenario. All the buildings lies this way. Then, then you have to traverse for going left, all the way up, all the way down. In this case also, you need to traverse 
n buildings again. So n into n becomes again n square. And that is not still fit into our solution, right? I hope you get it. This is the worst case scenario. All buildings lies in the same x coordinate or same y coordinate, vice versa. You can say that. So this also won't work. But okay, what is actually matters? Let's try to understand that. What actually matters is let's say a building is there. How do you now know that whether a building exists or not? Uh, somehow, if I know he, some building should be there here and some building should be there here. Okay. What does that mean? It means it should not be, it should not be the extreme coordinate, the extreme coordinate. That is the idea. Right. Means what that for this x coordinates, let's say this coordinate is y1, this is y2, and this is y3. All are, let's say, we are sorted in a increasing order. This y1, neither it should be the bottom most coordinate of that same x, nor should be the top most coordinate. That is the idea. Then we can say that it has at least some top element and at least one bottom element. It lies in between. Okay. Hmm. How we can do it? Try to think about it. There are two approaches to solve it. One is a op not optimal way, better way. And one optimal way will also think about it. Cool. So how we can know about it? Firstly, let's try to think how we can keep track of all these things. Uh, then what we can think of for each x coordinate you need. Huh? You told map. So something like either we can store in a vector or we can store in a set. There are two options available to us. Uh, right. Absolutely. You are right about. And every point is unique also. That is also fine. Right. So that means we can create set also. There is no problem. Now the most important part is what you need to know. You need to know that whether this x coordinate is topmost or bottommost or not. Means this y I need, this y1 location I need to know. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. So, can vector tell me efficiently whether this is a topmost coordinate or bottommost coordinate? Uh, if you think about it, no, right? Because it is not in sorted order. It could be in any random order. Yes, you are absolutely right. That's what, that's what you can do it. That, okay, let's use set. And using this set, we can tell that, okay, let's for this x coordinates, he, it has a y coordinate, let's say y1. And I need to check in this set whether this is the smallest element or largest element. If it is neither of these two, that means it is covered by top or bottom. Absolutely right. In the similar way, we will create another map of int comma set of int. And this time, this will keep track of what? This will keep track of y coordinates. So y coordinates wala map hoga. So what it will do? It will see, oh, it has same y. So same concept we will apply. Whether this x coordinate is x1, this it is lies between some x2s and x3s or not. That is efficiently we need to find. And again, this we have we can do with the help of this map kind of thing. We just need to check this in this set. What is the set? Set is this y. Same y coordinate, right? Similarly, for here, we have to search in MP of this uh, another map. Obviously, let's say MP1, you can say that. In here, MP2, you can say that. They have same x coordinate, right? Here, this is a set. I hope you're getting it because a key has a set. So, MP2 of x we will search in and we need to figure out, okay, that in this, whether let's try to find out the smallest element. Smallest element should not be x1, largest element should also not be x1. And that is the idea. That's how you can figure out, right? And in this way, you can easily solve this. Let's try to see the code. You will understand better and we'll also see an example to understand it better. Oh, okay. This is the code I'm talking about. So what you can do, you can create two maps, MP of x and MP of y. And then what you can do, you can just insert for every x coordinate, the y coordinate and for every y coordinate the x coordinates and then what you can do you can just count the stuff only when when this for x for this same x 
this y should not be the smallest this y should not be the largest if any of these case fails we will continue we won't consider its contribution similarly in the y wala case what we going to do for same x uh, what we going to do that uh, this mp of x dot r begin should not be r begin should not be equals to y that means what that this uh, x dot r begin uh the same y coordinate that let's we, we we have checked the both the extreme ends by the way okay like we have checked x and y here we have checked x and y here you can check x and x in the same goal so i just check the bottom together or you can say smallest together i have checked the smallest together you can do vice versa also actually you need to check all the four conditions okay these are the largest like you can say bottom now together together if any of the these scales like this is should not be the largest also and will continue otherwise if both the conditions are not satisfied and we reach here will increase the count right let's see with the help of an example that will understand you better okay okay let's try to see an example so what is the example this 1 2 2 2 3 2 2 so what we'll do we'll keep a store of the map so for one key we will store what two we will store and nothing else i guess so only two for two what you will store you will store two also you will store three also what is this two also this is one also and you will store three also also in obviously in the sorted order but okay and for three uh, three you will store three itself okay this is for x coordinate similarly we will do for y coordinate also so for y we'll do again two correspondingly we will get uh, you can calculate from here also 1 comma 1 so you can get 1 and for y equals to 1 you will get x equals to 2 okay and then similarly for y equals to 2 you will get x equals to 1 2 2 and 3 i think they are just the opposite things only and for y equals to 3 You will get x equals to two. Okay, okay, okay. This is how you are getting it. Now what you gonna do is now you will iterate on everything, every point. Okay, let's go on this one comma two. Okay, and then we just need to check in the map of one. Ki okay, is this extreme end the y coordinate? Is it? Yes, it is. So we cannot consider because only one point is there, right? So this. there is no element above or below it so we cannot consider this point perfectly fine let's consider 2 2 okay 2 point so whether it lies in between this two see we have to search in this two yes there is an element up below it and there is an element above it how we are checking it using the min max using directly you can do in constant time right because it is stored in set and we can do it efficiently right and similarly okay for till x it is fine let's try to see in here also oh here also it is satisfied because it lies in middle here also it is mid i'm just didn't sort it but they are in actually in sorted order right so 2 comma 2 yes 2 comma 2 yes let's try to see 3 comma 2 no 3 comma 2 won't suffice why see here it won't suffice uh, we'll check in firstly in this part but there is no above and below that i think this is not 3 comma 2 uh, actually Two also, right? It's two by by my right. Yes. Yeah. Still, it's not such suffice because only one element is there. Again, we gonna go in two comma one. Let's try to see two comma one. See, the one is the smallest. Again, it is the extreme end, right? We cannot consider it because this one, there's no smaller element than one. So we cannot consider two one also. This is actually two one. We just erase this so that you can see it. So this is actually two one. Yep. Yeah. And then. Okay, and then two comma three again. We gonna check three. Three is the largest one. There is no element beyond three, so we cannot take this also. We just only take two comma two is our answer, right? Now, after seeing this dry run, do you get an intuition that what we can do better here? Do we need to store all the elements? Can you tell me if you understood the solution very well? Uh, Sayam, you are always talking about the maximum and the minimum. Why you are showing all the elements? Right, right. You don't need to store all the elements. 
na 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 you don't require you don't require you required this step just to know that whether the smallest or largest element is same as this y or x coordinate or not right so instead of storing all the elements just keep track of just keep track of all elements of all elements x key and y key min max that means what for every x coordinate you encounter you will keep a min 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 y and max y similarly for every y coordinate you will keep track of min x and min y max y max x sorry yeah this you will keep track of right and that's all nothing else you require and once you do that you just do the same operation what you are essentially doing you are essentially comparing the min max only right here also you can do this efficiently let me just quickly show you how you can do it so you can just keep of instead of keeping the set you can just keep a pair for keeping the min max same x range y range int int right the key remains same the value changes now you will pre compute it firstly the min max thing so firstly we will check oh, whether this x coordinate comes for the first time if it is comes for the first time both min max are the same y coordinate right otherwise if they already occurred this x coordinate already occurred so firstly we will set the min of x range dot first like this x range already we have got a y value for this current y value similarly for the max part and same thing we going to do with the y range also y wala part also same replicate right and using this we pre computed for every x we have the mix, min max and for every y we have the min max and then this we need to check whether it is an extreme end of x or whether it is an extreme end of y if either of the those case occurs we cannot say this building is covered right both should be not extremes that's all x also we have to check y also we have to check so we check both the conditions for for extreme x that okay this min value should not be equals to y also max value should not equals to y similarly min min value should not be equals to x and min value should not be equals to y this we are checking for y we are checking in x and x we are checking y that's the vice versa logic i hope you are getting it and then if it is neither of these cases we just count plus plus otherwise and then finally we'll just return the count right i hope you understood the entire solution the entire thought process if you love the solution make sure you to subscribe to the channel and like the video we'll see you in the next video then till then keep learning goodbye